Hi right, everyone, Cody Dong here. So today I'll be showing you how to make nitric acid using electricity, air, and water. I'm going to be using the same process that forms nitric acid naturally, like in lightning. Electricity, or an incredibly high temperature, breaks apart the oxygen and nitrogen atoms, which then can recombine forming nitrogen oxide molecules. Add another oxygen molecule to that, and you wind up with NO2, which is a brown gas. This uh, NO2 can then combine with water, forming nitric acid and more nitrogen monoxide. I'm going to be simulating lightning with this 9000 volt transformer, which I got from the DI, which I assume was originally for neon lights or something. And I'm going to be running the electric arc through this fish tank bowl here. You can see on the underside I've just got some copper tubing running in. And the arc will jump between these two tubes. And through the tubes, I'll be running air using this little fish tank bubbler. That air that comes through and then is reacted with the electricity, I'm going to have come down into my bottle of water here with this little bubbler stone, and hopefully I form some nitric acid. The process won't be 100% efficient because, of course, this uh, nitrogen monoxide species that uh, escapes, but it should be enough that I'll be able to tell if it works at all. If I am able to make nitric acid here, I should be able to tell by adding some baking soda to the water. If nitric acid is present, the nitric acid will react with the sodium bicarbonate, forming sodium nitrate and CO2. The CO2, of course, will bubble out of solution being my indicator. Also, just in case the water is acidified without forming nitric acid, say maybe this makes ozone or something and it makes some weird acid, then I'm going to add this uh, penny to the solution as well. If the penny dissolves in the acid, then I'll know that it is in fact nitric acid because nitric acid is one of the very few acids that can dissolve copper. Let's put this uh, white paper behind this bulb so you can see the brown gas that forms. Let's go ahead and plug the bubbler and transformer in. There we go. You can see we've got a nice little electric arc going. As this heats up, that electric arc will jump up to the top there. Okay, there we go. We got bubbles of air coming through. For some reason my bubbler stones didn't work. Like, my air pump must not be powerful enough or something. Uh, this still will work, it just won't be quite as efficient. You can see this uh, arc is starting to bounce around. Very nice. I'm gonna let this thing run basically all day. Uh, you can see the sun shining in from the window right there. When I come back, that will probably not be there. <laughs> the sun has gone down. It's been about five hours since I started this thing up. You can see the uh, chamber is pretty brown. Everything's still running. In fact, if I were to turn that air pump off, this probably might be browner. I've been checking on it occasionally, making sure it didn't catch on fire or anything. I mean, this is quite warm, but it's, it's not too bad. I got a smoke detector up there just in case to alarm me. And anyway, here's this thing. Still bubbling. Very nice. Go ahead and just turn this thing off. There we go. All right. Let's open up our bottle with the acid. You know, these uh, water droplets on the side probably contain more acid than anything. Let's wash those down into there. All right. A little bit of baking soda. There we go. Let's see if this uh, reacts with the baking soda. How about that? It's definitely acidic. So I just washed the uh, baking soda off. This time what we're going to do is we're going to pour out an amount of the acid that we've produced. It looks like about uh, a milliliter or so. And let's uh, kind of add baking soda to it until it stops reacting. That way we can get an idea of how much, how concentrated the acid is. Here's one pinch here. Okay, seems to react at all that. There's two pinches. It's not bad. There's three. Looks like it's starting to slow down. Yep, that seems to have been it. So just over three pinches worth of acid in about a milliliter. But this kind of gives us an idea. See, I have maybe about uh, 15 milliliters left. 
that means that I could have about 45 pinches, probably quite a bit more than I have in my hand here, consumed with this acid. Kind of gives you an idea how much nitric acid this was producing. That arc contains about 40 watts of energy, and you look at a lightning strike which has 1.21 gigawatts over a couple of seconds, that means that a lightning strike has about one, two, two billion joules of energy. This thing's doing 40 joules per second. So this thing would take possibly over a year to produce the amount of nitrates that are produced during a single lightning strike. You know, kind of kind of puts that into perspective to you uh, just how much nitrogen is produced by lightning. Uh, which is why some people sometimes say that lightning produces a odor of nitrogen in the air after a big storm. <laughs> now we've got this confirmed that it is acid. Let's go ahead and do a check to make sure that it is nitric acid. See if it's reacting with the penny. There we go. Looks like it's reacting with the penny. Very nice. Another thing about this nitric acid that I produced is now that I've reacted with the baking soda, I could add it to a plant. And this is actually a good fertilizer for the plant. I could perhaps run this apparatus with a solar panel inside of a greenhouse and produce all the nitrates that I need for my plants. Ooh, definitely smells like acid. The penny is dissolving. It is dissolving quite slowly, unfortunately. I mean, this was an incredibly energy intensive process and it didn't make a whole lot of acid, but I was able to do it using the most simple ingredients possible. I think that's quite the accomplishment. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.